Newsmaker program at 17 minutes before the hour, and uh, we're waiting to hear now from our guest. Uh, he didn't make it to the studio. We think maybe there was a little goof up, and we're hoping we're going to have him on the phone. Da -da 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 nope. 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 We're not going to have him on the phone, apparently. Well, at least not for the moment. Now what do I do? Uh, but there you are. We're sort of caught. These things happen once in a while when our guests don't show. I love to see you sweat. Well... <laughs> <laughs> You know, speaking of that, do you, you, you've lived uh, in many places, mm -hmm. California and the Midwest and, uh, and Arizona. I find this a very disappointing summer. It's so cool. I don't mind it not being terribly hot, although I do prefer hot to cold. But does this seem well, a Ray, lot cooler than usual? Ray Wells said that uh, we we're in for some cooler than normal weather. He said this uh, a month ago. Boy, he hit that right on the head. It, was he predicting for July? Has he predicted for July yet? I haven't heard about July, but he said June would be cool. And last night we were in the 30s. As a matter of fact, the overnight low was 38 degrees. And that's ridiculous for June 12th. Yeah. You, know, you know, I, I bet a lot of people who have pools, and a lot of people do now have pools, Yeah. I haven't even bothered to open them up because it's so cold. Yeah. Well, it kind of loses incentive, you know, when you've got goosebumps before you even get to the water. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, uh, you're right. I did live in different areas of the country where I remember living in Las Vegas for three years, and I would come out of the radio station. It was so hot you couldn't even touch the steering wheel on the car. You know, it was a dry heat, like they always say, but... Uh, uh, it was hot, hot, hot. Now, say that again, uh, that, that, that even though it was supposed to be dry heat, it... it oh, it was just scorched. You could actually fry an uh, egg on the sidewalk, and that's, and that's no joke. It was really hot. You couldn't hardly get inside of the car. Well, Did you like that? Well, I'm not a desert person, really. A lot of people do love it, and it's good for your body, I guess, providing, you know, you have aches and pains. Not good for the skin, though, but uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other. It was an area where you had to have air conditioning. It was literally a survival unit. And we had the pool. You had to have a pool. And so afternoons, boy, I'd be underwater with a straw sticking out there. That mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I lived in Mississippi when I was in my um, early 20s. Lived there for two or three years. Now, that's humid. Yeah, that's really hot. Now, I didn't mind it because I used to like to swim every day. And I worked uh, on the air from 6 in the morning. Listen to this. From 6 in the morning till 10. Yeah. That was it. That was it. Rub it in. And then I had... Then I had to come back at night and do some recording, so I worked on the air. Maybe it was 5 till 9 or 6 till 10, something like that. But anyway, I had all the day off, then I uh -huh. come back at night and, and, and do commercials. Yeah. So guess where I went every day? You went swimming. Absolutely, every single day. And that's why today, when you walk around, you have to cover up your fins. Because you, <laughs> you broke out in fins, and, <laughs> and he keeps them covered. Nobody knows this. But I'll tell you something. Uh... I'm not sure that I could do this today. I was in Charleston last week, as you know, mm -hmm. or the week before, I guess now, and uh, the temperature there was in the 90s, and it was humid. It was very much like Mississippi, yeah. and this time it bothered me. Uh, it didn't when I was young. This time it bothered me, and, and I said, I'm not sure I could really, that I could really take that anymore. I remember you talk about hot spots. I, uh, of all places, uh, would frequently go to uh, Topeka, Kansas, I mentioned to you once before I belonged to the Kansas State Historical Society, you know, the old West stuff and everything. And so we'd make uh, frequent trips there. And boy, for some reason, that heat in Topeka was just unbelievable. It was worse than the desert of Vegas or something, I guess, because of the, the humidity. But, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, I was soaking wet in mm -hmm. Topeka. Mm -hmm. Now, you're from the Midwest originally. Yeah. Uh, hilly country? Well, no. Rolling hills like we yeah, have? Yeah, kind Rolling of. Kind of. Um, didn't you find Kansas a little dull? So flat? Well, that was more Nebraska. I didn't find that uh, a whole lot of Kansas was that way. Certain areas are, and some areas aren't. It's just like Arizona did. You know that half of Arizona is all desert, and the other half is snow and mountains and everything? It's mm -hmm. like two different states. And I kind of found that a little bit with Kansas and some areas there. But Nebraska is the one to me that's like a dinner plate. Dr dreadfully dull. Yeah. Good. Well, you know, we were going to be talking about all these heavy issues today on the program. I don't want to bring all those heavy issues up to well, Gary Gray. But let's talk about... Well, can I... One sure. quick heavy issue? Sure. Uh, how, how, how's your weight doing? <laughs> You're nice. You know what? <laughs> what? Uh, six pounds, I think. You dropped six pounds? Dropped six in a week. You're kidding. No? You really did? Six pounds? Well, let me wow. put it to you this way. I dropped four and a half... 
in uh, in four days. Okay? Yeah. This is the Diet Center program. Four and a half in four days. I'm going to guess that by now it's six. I'll know later on when I get down and get checked. But I suspect it's six by now. It, you know, going at that pace. See, Kevin had a little bit of a weight thing there. He was in a race with a pregnant lady, and he came in third. <laughs> And he said, I'm losing some weight, and boy, you're really dropping the pounds. No, I'll tell you what really happened. I went down to get a sport coat, and the guy said, 48. <laughs> 48 long. Yeah. And this is a guy who used to wear 40. Right? Yeah. 48 long. I said, wait a minute. Something's got to give you. That's, <laughs> that's a bit much, and with that I made... A commitment, and I talked to the lovely lady there at Diet Center, and bingo. But, you know, I found, I had kind of like the same thing not very long ago, and I found that uh, one manufacturer of clothes, I wore one size, and another manufacturer, I wore yet another. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't always agree on That's what's... That's true, but uh, this, this is the same company over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> and when Franny said to me, Franny DeSanto said, it's 48 long, I said, <laughs> Franny, recheck it. Double check it, triple check it. He said, no, Kevin, it's 48 long. 48 and long. Uh, something's got to give here. <laughs> we got to we got to do something. Uh, that that's kind of big. Well, we're let, let's keep an eye on your weight thing. Maybe every once in a while we can kind of do an update on you, huh? Very good. Yeah. We'll be back in a moment, friends. Savo is not with us, and uh, we're listening to Gray and Dorn. And, and the interesting thing is, it's going to be Gray and Gilmore, Gilmore and Gray, in the next hour. Uh, so, I'm afraid. If you don't like Gary Gray, you're in for a rather dull day. I'm going to have to get my mouth retreaded, I think. It's going to be a busy one here, but uh, we'll do it some more after that. All news, all the time. News 24 hours a day with CNN. Available for Hornell Cable TV service. CNN News, 24 hours a day. Plus other special feature programming, including Christian Broadcasting. Call Hornell Cable TV for details, 324-4611. Strobel's Welding at 75 Atza Street in Hornell is the leading supplier of welding supplies. In business for over 50 years, Strobel's knows that customer satisfaction is the name of the game. Strobel's has the largest supply of Makita tools and Lincoln welders and is an authorized repair station. Strobel's Welding, Atza Street, Hornell. Okay, okay, we're doing Newsmaker programs. Well, you know, last week uh, we had someone here about the Indians. Uh, TV Indians, a professor at Corning Community, and mm -hmm. after the show, Gary said, I have some knowledge of that because I belong to the Kansas Historical Society, and, and you went into that uh, with the idea of, what, studying the old gunslingers? Well, I was interested in the Old West, and uh, really got into it so much so that I joined the, the society. And read, oh, I read and read and read about that stuff. And actually, uh, through the years, visited many of the famous places that uh, a lot of things happened in the Old West. Even when I was a kid, my folks, we went to um, Custer's Last Stand and that kind of thing. Stood on the spot where that happened. And it's really kind of different to read about it and then actually go there and see for yourself. I wholeheartedly advise whether it be a Western thing or, or any part of... Uh, uh, our heritage in this country. To go and see some of these things while you can, because it's it's something that you'll never forget. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, as a kid, I remember Custer's Last Stand. Went to the Virginia cities in Nevada and in Montana. There were two. Didn't see any sign of the Cartwrights, the Bonanza Gang. I don't know what happened to them. Well, they were fictional, right? Oh, yes, they were. But I was surprised the other day when I was talking to that guy that there was no uh, uh, Matt, Matt Dillon. Matt I thought Dillon. there was a real Matt Dillon. He was a composite of many Western characters. He, he was fictional. But there was one character who, uh, Charlie Bassett is his name. He was Marshal of uh, Dodge City, Kansas. And if you were to ask the originators of Gunsmoke who Matt Dillon was uh, uh, designed uh, upon, uh, if I could say it that way, it would be Charlie Bassett. He was a big, strong Marshal. And one of his uh, uh, assistants, one of his... Uh, Deputies was Wyatt Earp. Wyatt was never marshal huh. of uh, Dodge City. Oh, but you know they were. Uh, you correct me if I'm wrong. Weren't those those guys who were the lawmen really kind of sleazy guys who had, could have gone either way and maybe sometimes did. Sometimes they oh. were good guys and sometimes they were bad guys. Boy, you've got that right. Uh, get, uh, taking money under the table and gambling when they should have been out. Hickok was terrible that way in Abilene, Kansas. Instead of out there doing his job, you'd find him in there gambling and whatever. But one thing they did that uh, Western movies hardly ever portray, I wouldn't say never, but hardly ever, 
And it was smart. They would go out with a shotgun, per, uh, patrol the town with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. So if they had uh, Western people coming around giving them problems, uh, I mean, they had a couple of barrels aimed right at their head, and that took care of the case. And assassination was not uncommon in those days, whether it be assassinating a marshal or the marshal assassinating the scum, if you will. Well, but, well the, and, and weren't some of those guys who, uh, who were the lawmen, weren't they, in fact, crooks on the side? Some Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they might be with one gang, and they were just, what they were doing was really opening up the town for their own gang, in, sure. in some cases. Sure. Is that, that right? That's absolutely right. Even some of the famous ones. Uh, Wider, for example, when he was young, was arrested for horse stealing, you know? And Hickok uh, was literally chased out of... Uh, where was it in Kansas for when he was marshal there for uh, shooting the soldiers? Shooting soldiers, he killed like two or three of them. And uh, one of the, uh, may, I, I don't have the name at the tip of my tongue, they put out a, a, not an APB, but a similar type thing on Hickok. He had to get out of town. They were after him. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not like what you see in the movies and, and the television a whole lot. I wish it was, but... Well, yeah, I was asking that prof the other day, Gary, about the, uh, the gunfights. You know, why would a man go out on the street and reach for a six-gun when he could carry a shotgun yeah. and get everybody? Uh, they, did they actually do that? Did they go out with the, with the six-guns and shoot it out? Very, very rarely. And the way it was done on rare occasions would be one guy would be on one end of town and the other guy would be on the other end of town, and they'd slowly walk toward each other. And when they got within range or when somebody figured that they could uh, pick off the other guy, that's the way they would do it. Mm -hmm. was this fast-draw thing. You know, speed uh, really wasn't the, the paramount issue in gunfights. It was the best shot and the steady hand. Well, let me ask you this. Were there any, in, in your study of this, were there any uh, of the lawmen who really were good men, who really did do a good job and, and were really out there for truth, justice, and the yes. American way? Huh? Bill Tillman is a very famous uh, marshal. Anybody into uh, Western... Uh, historical uh, people uh, will know the name Bill Tillman, but my particular favorite was a guy named Tom Smith. He Tom was, Smith? Tom Smith. Really? Was, yeah. yeah no, okay. uh, no. He was the guy that uh, ruled Abilene before Hickok with his fists. He was a cop in New York City, I think it was, and did not carry a gun. Can you imagine? Hmm. And, uh, boy, they had a great deal of respect for Tom Smith. Even to this day, Tom Smith in Abilene is... Uh, He's a martyr in that city. Was he a martyr? Did he, he die? He, he truly was. He was called out for uh, the way he ended up. He ended up dying on, on the job. He, it's kind of gross. He was called out to this ranch, and they were waiting for him. But they didn't shoot him. They took care of him with an axe, you know, mm. and from behind. It was the only way you could put Tom Smith down was from behind. Mm. He was really, truly a genuine Western hero. Well, who, who was the other one that you mentioned uh Tillman, did you yeah, say? Yeah, Bill Tillman was... Uh, a, you, you didn't mess with Bill Tillman either because he was truly a tough guy and uh, was for law and order in the American way, as you say. Mm -hmm. There weren't very many, but Tom Smith and Bill Tillman were two that, that come well, to mind. As I remember it from, from what I read, and it was not as anywhere near ex as extensive as your reading, was that the, the government would say, oh, who are the best ones to patrol the crooks and the gangsters? I don't think they used the yeah. word gangster in those days. Yeah other crooks and other gangsters because they know where they are, they know who they are and, sure. and, and, and they also were able to rethink the whole thing the way a gangster might if they came upon a, a crime. Absolutely. So they grabbed crooks. Absolutely. And these guys, on them. these guys would go, unfortunately, in many cases where the most money was. <laughs> and they, they could be wearing a badge, but if uh, there was enough money for them to uh, turn the other way or to even assist... That was not uncommon in the Old West. Well, our time is about gone. I was simply going to take the paper today, the newspaper, and, and look at all these stories. For example, in, um, in West Germany, Gorby goes over to meet West Germany today. Now listen to this. A survey of West German, uh, West German residents by the West German Television Network said that 90% of the West Germans trust Gorbachev. Only 58% trust Bush. <laughs> and only 50% trust their own leader, Cole. <laughs> and then we have the story of Jaroslawski, that little wimp over there in Poland who's got to be one of the most unattractive figures in world history with his sunglasses. He looks like a little nork. Anyway, Jaroslawski is in, in, in Poland putting a wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier. So we have the communists going both ways, and the people in Germany 
people in Germany <laughs> have greater trust in Gorbachev than they do in either Kohl, their own leader, or President Bush. I'm telling you, Gary, the world is upside down. You know, I was looking at your thing for tomorrow. You have the chief investigator for the Florida Crime Prevention Commission. Is that right? That's right. And he's going to be talking about in the world where crime is on the increase, even out here in the, the boonies, if we don't have it here as bad as they do other places, once in a while we go to the city, we know how awful they can be. Well, I understand that uh, if, uh, the, the drug situation in Florida is just unbelievable. Out of control. Yeah. And he's going to be talking about how you protect yourself from, from druggies and, and burglars and, and violent crime. Well, and just because we're not in Florida doesn't mean that uh, we can't learn a few things from this and maybe absolutely. take a couple of tips down. Absolutely. Gary, thank you for being our guest. And f How about that? News is next at 9 on WLEA, the information source and news authority. This is WLEA 1480 AM, Hornell. Coming up 9 o'clock, news next.